our first day at, in France. We've made it after kind of a hectic travel day. Yes. Um, up early this morning. I was up at three. And I got up at five. Lazy bones. Yeah. So we're out. Um, this is... Uh, is this the tourism place? I'm, What's this called? I'm not sure what it is. It's whatever it is, it's cool. It's impressive, yeah. It's yeah. a large, very large kind of cast almost looking building. Yeah. We're gonna do a Rick Steves walking tour of historic Paris. Yes. And we're starting at Notre Dame. Yep. Uh, so we're just heading that way to go to Notre Dame. And we've got tickets to go through what church? Um, it's St. Chapelle. Yeah. Which is supposed to be really cool for the stained glass and yeah. stuff. So. so we'll see how it looks. Yeah, fun. So we are, um, tell, tell them a little bit, just a little bit about yesterday. We tried to do this Rick Steves. Um, Walking tour with, with the bus. Yes. It, well, it's just that the, the, the places he was telling us to go, particularly at Notre Dame, weren't accessible because of the construction. So, mm -hmm. but we did see some other stuff and it was fun. But today, Eif Eiffel Tower, Arc de Triomphe, Arc de Triomphe. Eiffel Tower, we, which we have lots of pictures of. Today we're heading to Versailles. Um, so we have to go down to the uh, metro station, get on a bus, mm -hmm. about an hour? Is it an hour out there? Something like that, a couple, yeah. couple, couple uh, transfers. Yeah, yeah. All right, so we're taking you along on Versailles. We'll get some shots maybe from the train for you, and we'll see what we see when we get there. Versailles and through it but it got to feel overwhelming to me mm -hmm. because it was room after room after room and it was very crowded which we knew it was going to be mm -hmm. I'm, 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 I'm interested in going to a a smaller castle yes yes and and I hate to admit it because we're probably going to get mocked for this but we're not big museum people we're not ones who will spend hours walking through and looking at all the artwork and reading and, every little sign right or... And so we literally made it through, I think, about two rooms of Versailles before we turned off our audio guide because we didn't want to hear the description of, of one, paint. more painting. one more painting. <laughs> Something like that, where some park. Yeah, and we've been walking around. We're in the uh, La Marais neighborhood. Been a really quaint neighborhood, but um, it's been it's been exactly what I would expect it mm -hmm. from a from a French neighborhood. Mm -hmm. um, little right. tiny streets. Little tiny streets. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyway, this is a plaza with Louis behind us. Louis the one, one of the Louis. Louis the Roman numeral. <laughs> I think it's Louis, Louis the Eighth. Or I don't know. Anyway. But it's been really nice. It's just kind of hot. It's uh, in like in the 90s right yeah, it's now. It's been a hot week in Paris. It's been a very hot week in Paris. So we might be going to the Louvre. 
we're gonna head that direction and see. And we'll share that with you. And we hate to admit it, but part of the reason is because it's air conditioning. We're saying well, I looked it up. Oh, <laughs> it is. <laughs> All right. It was the one condition. Yes. So uh, we're going to go hop on the metro, which is always an adventure. And we'll pick you up at the, at the Louvre or someplace else if we decide to divert. Yep. So, there you go. that it's my metro ticket what you washed it it was in my pants pocket and you washed my metro ticket okay so we had a a, a, a seven day metro ticket that you lost we bought a two day metro ticket to that you washed mm, How would I know it was in your pocket? I don't know. You should have known. So we have to do what now? Get another one. Metro ticket. Yes. For one day. Yeah. <sighs> so where are we? <laughs> well, let's first talk about where we're not. Okay. Okay. So we just finished our uh, five days in Paris. Yep. And we thought we'd just do a quick recap about... Um, some of our experiences there, some things that were surprising, some things that were amusing, and just reactions to that. So um, let's start with, um, talk about the experience using the Metro for transportation in uh, Paris. So, so the Metro was super efficient for getting around. Mm -hmm. Mostly it was really easy to figure out, mm -hmm. but um, at times it was somewhat confusing. Um, and at other times, it was very crowded and uh, chaotic. Yeah, um, we the other the other challenge with the metro is that there's very few uh, escalators, and so uh, which is fine for us. We got a lot of steps in, got a lot of, a lot of floors steps. in. But when we were using it to move uh, with luggage, it was. Some a work. lot of work yeah. because we both had about 50 pounds of luggage that we were carrying up and down. So the Metro was extremely efficient and easy for us to get around and um, best way to get around Paris. Never needed a car. Exactly. So want to do that. Don't, don't, don't want a car in Paris. Absolutely not. So what'd you think of the food? You know, um, I found, well, first of all, we really enjoyed, we ate a lot at the boulangeries, which is where you get... Um, Croissants and uh, tur apple turnovers and sandwiches, sandwiches and stuff like that. So that was, they were they were good, uh, and we'll probably still continue because we got a lot to go there. But um, we had some really excellent meals, and we had some um, average meals. Um, but I would say the the biggest thing about food was the experience. We ate almost every meal. Sit, I think it was every meal mm -hmm. sitting outside. Uh, and outdoor bistros, which was my dream about coming to Paris, was picturing us, you know, with somebody playing the accordion down the street, uh, sitting and eating wonderful food. Mm -hmm. 
and that it was great, but there were some challenges to eating at a bistro at these outdoor cafes. So what what do you what kind of struck you as challenging? Well, we were thinking we should take up smoking. Yes. To fit in. So the Parisians smoke a lot. At, well, at least they smoke at these at these bistros. Every bistro table that's outside the restaurant has an ashtray on it. And, and they they're used, used liberally. They used to, they get used a lot. So you yeah. might be you might be having your dinner and somebody is sitting next to you having drinks and cigarettes. Right. So and, or on both sides of you and behind you. And so you can't get away from it. And we we actually might have even considered eating indoors, except the indoor part of most of these places were not air conditioned. And so you get no breeze. And it, by the way, did we mention it was really hot? The, the time in Paris was very hot. Oh. Mid, mid 90s, just about pretty much the entire time. Right. And so you don't want to be sitting in a stuffy hot restaurant. But the, the experience was still delightful. We saw a lot of, um, it was great for people watching. And uh, so we enjoyed that. But the, the smoking part was a challenge. And the other part is um, every, there are restaurants and bistros everywhere, everywhere yeah. and on every street. And everybody wants an outdoor cafe seating area. And all the seating areas, they've got a table that's probably literally this big for two people to eat off of. And their chairs are sitting side by side so you're facing out in the street. And at one of the, at one of the little bistros, I said it's like sitting in the middle seat of an airplane because you had somebody crammed up on either side and you got your little table there that you're trying to eat off of and they're trying to eat off of their table too. So Yeah, again, not complaining. It just wasn't expected. Yeah. Um, and so you're really tightly packed in those. Yeah. But again, the food was good, the the ambiance was great, the experience is great. Yeah. So uh, that was our so far our experience with food. But we'll have a lot more of that as we go along. Paris, being the big city it is, does not have very many toilets available. The pro the public toilets. public toilets available. The pro tip is is because there are so many cafes, most of those are going to have a bathroom, and if you um, are a customer at the cafe. You can use a bathroom there. So, the and I would tell you, it's worth the price of a yep. cup of coffee to go to a restaurant bathroom versus the weird. Mm -hmm. I'll just say weird public toilet. Yeah. So stop, stop, have a glass of iced tea. Yeah. Um, whatever, but there are public toilets available there. Yes, they the, for the, no cost. Somehow. Yes, they are free, and the public toilets look like a capsule. And where you you stand outside them and you can see the lights on them that tell you what stage that that public toilet is in. So if it's green, that means it's re available to use. And so you press the button that opens it and it slides open and you walk in to this toilet, which is usually gross. The, but the weird thing is, that, you know, as you kind of pan around, there's there's just not much in there, although it's a very large um, toilet. And um, but what's weird is the flusher doesn't work. You don't use the flusher. You finally press the little um, open button, and the, the the panel slides open, and people are standing out there waiting for the toilet. Um, but what we didn't know is that you have to get out, and they have to let the door shut again before they don't go back. They don't immediately go in. The next person, the door shuts. And then you watch the next light, and the next light is say, is, turns blue. It's a sanitation cycle. Right, a sanitation cycle where they are um, cleaning, apparently. I don't know what they're doing. There must be little magic people in there that are flushing the toilet. And, and I'm serious. that This is what it says. They said they're cleaning the floor, and they were cleaning the toilets in this uh, whatever magical stuff. Then it'll, then it'll pop and say that it's almost ready, and then it'll pop to green, and then the next person can go in. So it's an incredibly unique experience, and it's gross for the most part. Um, so, as Tom said, pay for a glass of something so that you can use a restaurant toilet in Paris. Mm -hmm. We did a lot in Paris. Um, we, we had some, do you have a favorite site that you saw of all the places that we went? Probably my favorite place was the catacombs. That's yeah. interesting. Why? I don't know. It was just it was just kind of a fast, fascinating historical thing. Um, mm -hmm. One plus was it was definitely cooler. cooler. It was outside, so that was nice. Uh huh. Um, but I a lot of the history behind that was one of the few places where we listened to the entire audio guide of the tour that we were on. Yes, yes. And so I'm just trying to recap, remembering. So we 
saw Versailles. We saw uh, the Marais neighborhood. We saw the Montmartre mm -hmm. neighborhood. We saw a little bit of the outside of, of Notre Dame, not mm -hmm. much. St. Chapelle it was a magical place with the most incredible stained glass windows that were just, I don't know, how high would you say those, those windows were? A hundred feet or more, I don't know. Was... The churches, all the, all the churches we've seen are beautiful. have been unbelievable. Um, the the Sacre Coeur was on it, in Montmartre uh, mm -hmm. neighborhood. That was pretty amazing in there. Mm -hmm. um, and to be honest, they start to blend together after a while, but... Um, but yeah, we went to the Louvre. Mm -hmm. That was another one that was overwhelming. The Louvre, the Louvre, well, was better and better than I expected, and worse than I expected in ways. Um, I actually enjoyed the paintings and things on the walls better, maybe because I didn't have the audio guide with me. Right. Um, getting to see the Mona Lisa, Mona Lisa was um, a chore in itself, and I'm guessing that that's probably the number one thing that people want to see when they go there. Mm -hmm. It was impressive. It was massive. I'm glad we went. And um, I don't need to go back, but it, but it was great. Totally recommend it. Anyway, so we saw a lot of sights. Um, we did a we saw the the Eiffel Tower light up yes. at night. So I think we just got a really great overview of Paris, and we could have probably done a lot more there, but we were ready to move on mm -hmm. to uh, other things. So join us next time as we leave the city behind and begin our tour of the French countryside in the beautiful and quaint villages of Strasbourg and Celestat.